I want to go through practically a tool that I used very infrequently earlier in my career, and I think that hurt me during troubleshooting production systems and interviews, and that is LS off or list open files. Let's get an LS off. If you run LS off with LS dash, not dash, LS OF one word, uh, you get a whole bunch of stuff on the screen that is kind of hard to parse. Uh, it's even extra hard to parse because I have the big text size, so you can actually see it on your screen. But that's not super helpful. This is showing basically everything that's open on our system, who's opening it, what is the thing that's open, right? Not helpful. There's, there's, I mean, let's see how many lines of, this is 3,000 lines, right? We don't want that. So the main way that people use LS off is with a individual file. So if we go to var log, uh, sys log, right? We're going to look at an individual file. Um, nothing shows up because we don't have the correct permissions on intuitively. This doesn't give us uh, an error. It just doesn't show us anything. But if we look at LS off var log syslog with sudo, we see a standard LS off output. The important things to know here is we'll go through a little bit more of this in the future is the command syslog Damien has var log syslog open. The user is syslog. The PID is 146. There's other information that we're going to get into a bit. And yeah, there we go. We found user syslog has that file open. Let's look at another example and a little bit more nuance here. Now, let's say we have this directory. It's just a Golang project. It doesn't matter what's in here. But what matters is I'm going to vim open the main.go file. So if we come over here and we run ls off main.go, right? Wouldn't we see vim has it open? Nope, we don't because this is a very common scenario. A lot of Programs don't operate with files in the way you would expect. Vim opens a copy of this file, but how would we find that or a swap file? We can do that by looking at all of the open files for a given directory with plus D and then the, the directory that you would like to search. Run that. Basically, this shows us all the open files for a given directory. And here we see the command Vim with the user kev has the main.go swap file open. While we see this output, we can kind of go through some, what some of these columns more mean. Now, the first thing you'll see for individual file is the file descriptor itself and a letter after it. And basically, this letter means the way that it's locked. In this case, lowercase u means that it's a read-write lock for any length. You may see a capital R here, which is a read lock for the entire file. You know, this may come into play if you're trying to figure out how an individual file is locked uh, for the file descriptor. And if it doesn't have that, it has... Um, kind of other information about what it's looking at. As you can see, you know, bash doesn't have an individual file open, but it has this working directory open, which is the CWD current working directory. You might also see here is a text file txt, which actually we will see that text file if we use that capital D, uh, which is going to search through the child directories in this directory. And we're going to see in here, we have a program running in this directory temp.main, that program is running, it's a text, basically that's the, the program itself and a text file. This is just a Go binary that's running. That's what that is. Um, some other things you might see in here is mem and mmap for memory maps and memory map device. Um, you may see air, you may see RTD for root directory. Again, file descriptor or some information about what you're looking at if it's not a file. Next, we have this type column. This is the type of the thing you're looking at. Again, current working directory, these are all directories with the exception of this text uh, text file descriptor, which is just a regular file system file. And same thing with the main.go swap, a regular file system file. Other things you might see in here is first in, first out, uh, pipe, socket. Uh, you would see IPv4 for IPv4 connection, right? You might see a few different things in here. Right now, we're just looking at file system objects. So we have directories and regular files. So you can do this backwards, though. You can do that by searching for an individual file, or let's say you only have the user. So you can use ls off with a user. In this case, Kev, which is my user, and this will show all the open files by a given user. Let's say you only have the process ID. So I, in this other tab, we still have vim open. I'm going to do the ps aux, and then I'm going to grep for vim. And basically, this is just going to find vim um, in our system running. Here we go. It shows us main.go, but let's say you know the program didn't tell us what pr it had open, but we have this process ID of 28974. We can ls off with dash p and that process ID, and it will show us that process and the different things that it has open. In this case, we can see down here, it has that main.go swap file. Lastly, we can actually do this command ps aux grep vim right from ls off. We can see programs with the command vim has what files open and we can do that in sudo ls off dash c for the command, in this case vim and we should get the same output. Okay, a little modifier you can do here is let's say you want to combine or add or and two different uh, searches here. So in this case, 
Uh, let's go ls off plus D. So we're looking here, but we also want only things that are with the command vim. So we'd use the dash A to add basically two different searches. And here we can see everything that's in this directory with the command vim. Again, this is how we would just find that main swap go. Now that's working with normal files and different objects within the file system. The big area that I underutilized ls off was for networking. And you can see open connections in ls off with dash I you can search individually with four or six, right? You can you can do some searching there. You can also use colon port. So I have that Golang project working on pro, running on 8080. And you can see we just have this Golang main command running on 8080. Now, confusingly, it doesn't show you 8080 here. It shows you HTTP alt, funny enough, that is the named port for 8080. You can get rid of that with the, the dash capital P and this will show you 8080. Now, this also comes up, let's say, um, I know that we have uh, something running on localhost. So I know that Node is running on localhost that's providing a VS Code server in the background. So I know that's running my system. We can see all these local hosts. Um, if you don't want to do that domain name lookup, you can use dash n as well. And that's actually just going to show us the 127. Uh, a lot of different modifiers. The last one I'm going to mention here, buy an individual IP, so 127, dot zero dot zero dot one basically this is if you use the at sign after the i it's going to look at connections on this ip only and if we search this here we go here are those local host connections well cool uh that was ls off i hope you found that helpful i hope this was quick enough for you uh like i said cheat sheet in the description below uh if this was helpful thank you subscribe or like or whatever you all want to do uh, comment if you have questions and maybe i'll post another video